Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Reserved Investments. And wow, I got a doozy for you guys on this one. So on May 10th, 2024, news broke that GameStop, yes, struggling video game retailer GameStop, is going to be buying and selling graded Pokemon cards going forward. And this is actually going to start pretty soon. They've already put an announcement out that they are looking to get into this market. But like most of the decisions that GameStop makes, it's a little bit wishy-washy. And there are some concerns here. And I really think that they missed the mark entirely on the way that they're handling this. So there's an excellent article here that premiered on The Verge. For those of you guys unaware, it's www.theverge.com. Com. I'm going to put a link to this article in the video description below. You guys can read it in its entirety. We are going to go through it, and I'm going to give you my thoughts, because there's a lot to unpack here. Some good, a lot bad. Now, this particular piece was written by Sean Hollister on May 10th, 2024. You guys know I write for Antiques and Auction News, so as a fellow author in the Antiques and Collectibles trade, I always like to give credit to other people that have wrote pieces that I am going to be quoting verbatim in my particular YouTube videos. The subtitle of this particular piece reads, it's a collaboration with PSA. Yes, grading company PSA. One staffer says, and it isn't necessarily limited to Pokemon. So let's go through this article. Let's read it verbatim and let me give you my thoughts. And the article's title is, GameStop will buy and sell rare Pokemon cards but it doesn't want to catch them all. And that's where I have some concerns. So here we go. GameStop, the used video game retailer that's becoming increasingly associated with other kinds of speculative investments, wants to cash in on the resurgent card collecting craze. Staffers have told Pokey Beach, Polygon, and The Verge that stores will begin buying and selling rare Pokemon cards and possibly other cards as soon as next week. Okay, now on the surface, this seems like a great move, right? Right now, we all know Pokemon, especially vintage cards, are selling for all-time high price points compared to what they were selling for 10 years ago. Obviously, we can't include what happened during the pandemic because during the speculative praise of the pandemic, a lot of collectibles were selling for all-time highs. It wasn't just limited to Pokemon cards. It was video games, great at video games, comic books. A lot of pop culture collectibles were shot up into the stratosphere. But let's be realistic. Pokemon right now is very hot at present time. Whether we're looking at the market for graded cards, vintage cards, or even modern era cards. So I understand what GameStop is attempting to gain here by getting into this market. But like every news press releases, the devil is in the details. And as we go further in this particular article, we're going to get to those details and you're going to see where I have some concerns here. So let's continue. GameStop apparently doesn't just want any cards, though. Employees across multiple states state they'll only be buying cards that have already been graded by PSA. No qualms there. I agree 100%. At 8, 9, or 10 condition, meaning they're in near mint condition or better with only slight imperfections. And yet, GameStop won't accept the rarest cards valued at over $500 either. Let me state that last point again, because this is where I take issue. And yet, GameStop won't accept the rarest cards valued at over $500 either. This is where GameStop just lost me as a customer in this potential market. You are no longer now catering to the top tier investor in this particular space. That is a major mistake. You are a multi-billion dollar company and you are ignoring the top 10 or 5% of the market. Again, in my opinion, this is a major mistake. That doesn't mean that I expect GameStop to get into this market and right away go after 10, 20 or $30,000 cards, but they could easily 
go after two, three, four, five thousand dollar cards for how much money they have backing them. This is going to exclude a lot of your first edition Watsy era holofoil cards in high grade. This is going to even exclude most of the wonderful holofoil cards from sets like Sky Ridge that sell for a significant premium. This is a major mistake in my opinion. Once again, GameStop is doing something, but they're doing it half ass. They're not actually putting all their confidence in this market. They are pretty much just throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what sticks. The article goes on to state, you'll have to find somewhere else to sell your PSA 10 Shadowless First Edition Charizard. Why GameStop? Why are you turning away this segment of the market? People like me that have money to play in this particular proverbial pond of the Pokemon community. Why do you not want to do business with us? Why do you not want our money? There's less risk here than there was when you got into vintage video games because the vintage video games that you were selling were ungraded. You guys were doing stupid stuff. You guys were dealing in counterfeit games. With this, as long as you know how to look up a PSA slabs serial number, you're not going to get burned for the most part as long as you use common sense. Let's continue. One employee tells The Verge that this is an explicit collaboration between GameStop and PSA, but that GameStop won't offer grading services in store or help you mail your cards in for grading. Again, big mistake. Go all the way. Instead of going half in or half out, this is something that in today's marketplace, you want to go all in. You have nothing to lose in this equation, GameStop. You're already struggling in the video game space. It can't get much worse for you. Every day, your executives slap themselves in the face with a stale donut. Why on earth wouldn't you go all in on this. GameStop will take other kinds of PSA graded cards beyond Pokemon 2, that employee also says. Now, this is where I have to state, start with Pokemon. Perfect Pokemon first. Then if you want to go after Magic the Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh or sports cards, for heaven forbid, you can do that. But you need to get established in this market first. Why not go all in with Pokemon? I would love it if GameStop would offer like a Dark Charizard first edition holofoil card in PSA 10 from the coveted Watsi era. That what? At present time, I think that card's like 2800 bucks. They could easily afford to get into that market. I don't know why they're going so wishy washy at this. Most hardcore collectors are not going after modern era cards or even vintage cards that sell for just a few hundred dollars. Don't get me wrong, that's going to attract the mom and pops, that's going to attract some of the casual collectors. It's not going to attract the likes of your hardcore Pokemon collectors and investors, people like myself that can afford to play in the higher end of the proverbial pool. This is a mistake on the part of GameStop. The article continues, and while Pokebeach reports that you'll be able to buy cards too, they won't necessarily be the same rare PSA graded ones, but rather $1 singles to start. So great. We got an employee in the back that is pretty much just opening up damaged booster boxes that they probably can't sell for full price and they're going to put them in a bargain bin and they're going to cheapen the store going forward. This is completely ridiculous. Last paragraph of this particular article. GameStop didn't immediately respond to a request for comment. We've reached out to PSA as well. It's not clear when this program will roll out to stores while Pokey Beach says it's starting next week. 
My local store said it should begin in July. Once again, please learn from this. If you are a bonehead, mega billion dollar corporation, and you continue to do bonehead moves like this, you deserve to get slapped in the face with a stale donut. GameStop can't even make a decision to go all in on graded Pokemon cards with virtually no risk in the market. All they have to do is employ people who understand the Pokemon market and they could actually make this work. Instead, they're half in, they're half out. This is why GameStop continues to fail. This is why GameStop is an inept corporation that needs to be destroyed as much as I think they're a necessary evil at present time. Because let's be realistic, with the adoption of digital, with the adoption of digital video games and the like, how much time does GameStop have left as a primary video game retailer? I did a video on how GameStop can turn their whole company around. I guarantee you, they will ignore all those talking points and continue to go in this direction as long as they continue to make money for their executive team. This is why companies like this need to be destroyed at this particular point, or they need to be taken over by people who know how to run these particular companies and turn a profit and actually don't turn away their core fan base. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Please take the time to read this excellent article that premiered on The Verge. Again, link to this article will be in the video description below. I'll see you in the next video.